All right. I am back where I was. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the finale for Let's Play Knock Knock. After the unfortunate streak of game overs at the end of last episode, I've been playing through again. Finally got back to where we left off. Let's see. I've gotten here with a lot more time this time. So that's... I should be just fine. I had a little bit of an unfortunate streak of bad luck in the very last level right before this one. That cost me a little bit more time than I'm comfortable with, but... But... I should still have plenty of time to make it through the end of the game. We probably have, what, about two houses left, or two more waking sections, and one or two more dream sections. The sections here, the ones where you go out into the forest, these are the waking sections. And the sections with the guests attacking you in the house, those are the dreams, right? That makes sense. That makes sense in my head, at least. Um, I'm skipping all of these little bits of text because this is stuff that we've already heard before. So we don't need to hear it again. I just, I'm just kind of glancing over and making sure that it's not something that that's brand new. All right. So there are some things that I gleaned while playing through this most recent playthrough. Uh, some stuff that I saw off camera. You can find a little girl in the forest, and it, it sounds like she is the little girl who's being referred to in the diary pages. And she has a chance to show you things called fragments of reality, which are little quirky clips. And you can also go through a breach or through a door when the door shakes when you try to open it. That confused me a lot earlier. Those can transport you to those long hallway sections. And you have a chance of getting uh, reality fragments there. And from reading a few comments, finding fragments of reality seems to be how you influence which ending you get. Now, I haven't found a good trick to actually navigating the forest. It doesn't seem to take up that much time to the point where it's that likely to endanger your playthrough. I'm also not too sure if running into the other, I guess, creatures of the forest, I'm not sure if they have any impact on your ending or if they have Im any impact on your timer, but better safe than sorry. This is the furthest I have been so far, though. Oh, wait a minute. The map is filling in. The map is filling in as I go. I might be in a longer hall than I thought. I might still have not made it here with enough time left. That would be really unfortunate. Either way, though, I'll just do what I did with the last episode. If I do somehow put myself in a game over situation, I will just have to play through again. It's a short little playthrough, which is nice. It's a bit, It gets a bit repetitive, but it gives me a chance to learn about the game and figure things out more fully. Okay, let's not be pessimistic, though. I think I can make it through this in this playthrough. If not, though, I'll just cut ahead to wherever I game over, and you guys won't have to deal with the tedium of watching me play through multiple times. <laughs> okay. Let's just be extra cautious. Better, again, better safe than sorry. The end is so close. I can feel the home stretch. But... The game's difficulty has been spiking, so who knows? This could wind up being the hardest stretch of the game, in fact. Most likely will be. So, gonna try to be extra observant. Sorry if uh, my commentary stalls out a little bit. I have to explore as much as possible, too. Gotta still keep it interesting, right? <laughs> Here, birdies. Gather around the marble nest. The marble nest, I, f I think I heard that phrase before. It was probably towards the end of the last episode. Where's the diary? Could it be hiding here somewhere? Hey, where are you? Okay. Come up here. Get the lights on. So nervous, I'm so on edge. If I can make it through the rest of this cleanly, I'm pretty sure I can make it to the end. It's just, I don't know how much else is going to pop up around this map. 
it seems to be filling in as I go a little bit. Oh, right. Yeah, I should probably turn that on. Oh, man. I'm losing it. I'm losing my grip on this a little bit. Yeah, I don't want to go anywhere near the crying girl right now. Come on. I just need some clocks to appear somewhere. He thinks that he's tearing up the diary in his sleep. He feels that while he sleeps, he is eating his own life. Again, these sound like notes from a psychiatrist or something. Okay. And I will make... No. First, I'll wait and watch. And then I'll make a mad dash for that ladder and keep trying to explore the house. This dreaming is troubled. You are dying. But in the forest, they want you to live. It was they. Huh. When I walk through the forest, the monsters don't actually do anything to me. Maybe that's related somehow. I feel like there was a big revelation once I started finding those diary pages. But... There is still so much of this mystery left to unravel. Better unjam that door in a moment. Yeah. Let's go ahead and do that. More so than the lights being out. I can deal with the lights being out. Usually when I go back through and fix them after a monster's been in the room, that's less me thinking that, there, that there's a good reason to, and more just me being anal retentive and obsessive compulsive. That's just more be, me being obsessive compulsive about it. But the door's being jammed. Oh, I don't like that. That blocks off my escape routes, and I can't deal with that. Oh? The hell? Oh shit, there's a ghost coming. Really not even worth fix taking the time to fix while that ghost is out there. It looked like I lost a bit of time there, though, and I'm not sure why. Hmm. Hell. Not sure if it's a good idea to go down there. Because if the ghost comes out of the right side of the wall, I really have nowhere... Okay, there he goes. I would have nowhere to go. Oh, it's shit. It's turning around, and that's limiting me to the top part of the house. How do I make the ghost go away? It's my question. Ah. Uh, really uncomfortable here. I am really, really not comfortable with this. I'm trying to zoom out a little bit. Try to stay a little bit ahead, maybe, of what's coming down the way. Oh, hell. I'm gonna have to play hide-and-seek with it, but I do I have the time to be playing hide-and-seek? That's It looks like that's the only way I'm gonna make it go away, or at least slip past it. Yeah, I guess I do have the time to slip past it, because I'm betting that in the lower left part of the house... The lower left and the lower right, really. The several basement floors beneath me. That, uh, that's not great. I have to come out hiding it. It's gonna turn around, right? Yeah. Shit! Oh, hell, and it's faster than me. Have I made a mistake? No, I'll make it to the ladder in time! Oh, I'm betting what lies beyond that ghost patrol path are probably a few clocks. So if I could, if I can just slip past him, I can actually afford to lose the little bit of time that you lose when you hide, when the clock starts winding backwards. The only problem is having a real tough go slipping past this son of a bitch. I would more than make, well, I'm close enough to daybreak anyway that it probably doesn't matter now. But I would... Oh. They're having a party down there. But I think I would more than make the time up that I would lose hiding if I could just slip past the ghost. It's not really worth taking that chance now when I'm so close to the end. I can't possibly afford to lose all this time just on the hopes of finding a clock later on in a level. Or deeper in or further in. 
Maybe I'll get one here. That would be an extraordinary stroke of luck for me. Nope, just piles of leaves. Anything up here? Come on. Yeah, I can't afford to lose the time closing the breach either. Oh, Java. I can't even put together coherent fear mutterings anymore. Yeah, now the ghost is pathing up here, and there's a breach open right above me, so I'm going to keep letting him go past and then go back down, and I can keep this up as long as I need to, as long as nothing completely awful happens, I'm okay with this. There's that pile of leaves with a face buried in it again. Ah, it's, it passed back. I don't want to chill out in a room where there's a breach open, but... Okay. Daybreak is here. Made it through. Another night. I feel like I've said that a lot. But that's what this feels like. Just a struggle to survive, to make it through. We are now playing Resettlement. Is that what this is all about? Resettlement. It's a wish-making game. This is how you need to play it. If someone manages to wake up one hour before dawn... That person should declare themselves the living in their thoughts. At sunrise, the living should stand before the closed door and say out loud, The hour is at hand. It's time to get ready to go. After these words, the door should stay closed. If it doesn't work, that person is no longer living. Is that what happened to me when I ran out of time? The door stayed open. I wandered off into the forest and died out there, I was no longer among the living. And this game is played one hour before sunrise. Which I would guess would be the safe areas. That must be what it's referring to, an hour before sunrise. So am I, what, two hours before sunrise? Do I have two more of these to go through? I don't know if I have... if I'm gonna make it this time. Oh hell. That would not be... Fine. Not be fine and dandy. Okay. I need to be going this way. Down, left, and then loop upward. I used to sleep right here. Really? This isn't where your bed is. Softly, softly. Looks like the closer I come to running out of time the more he mutters. It happened here, in this very forest. In this very home. What exactly happened? Oh, shit. Oh, wait, no, it's right there. I thought there was a wall in between, and I had gone the wrong way. So close now. It's good to come to the end of your road with your heart at peace. It would be most grievous to meet one's fate without having wrapped things up. Yeah, you said it, buddy. Man, I don't know if I'm gonna make it. It looks like I still probably have this. Another... Another... Another dream section, and then a final waking section. Final waking slash forest section, assuming I have that right. At least I made it through the forest pretty quick this time. Okay, I have to be on my game. I have to really be on the ball this time. I cannot afford to screw up. Even one, and I don't think I could make it. On the other hand, if I make it through one more, I'm pretty sure that's it. Damn. This is the point where you start regretting every mistake you made, and I made very, very few leading up to this point in this playthrough. The second playthrough, anyway. But those few that I did make, they're coming back to haunt me really, really bad. No time to dwell on that, though. Learn from your mistakes, move on. That's pretty much all I can do right now. That and hope as hard as I've ever hoped. This isn't outright terrifying anymore. But this is no less intense 
this is my savior. I need as many of these clocks as I can possibly find. I need as little to go wrong as can possibly not go wrong. Okay. Be very cautious. Every room, keep zoomed out, keep vigilant. These are the things I have to keep in mind. Come on, another clock? Nah, probably not. Couldn't get that lucky, right? Eh. Hate that bat head. Oh well, just keep searching the house. There's a lot of house to search. I can't take my time like I did last time. I mean, I wasn't exactly screwing around, but I could have treated that with a little bit more urgency and planned better. I think the most time that I wasted in the last house I was in was with that stupid ghost. I probably could have found a clock. I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to take the risk. Okay. I'm feeling good things up here. Right? 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 Give me a clock. If I get a clock here... Hold on. Come on. If I get a clock here... I'm liking my odds. I really like my odds. Damn it. Okay, I like my odds a little bit less, but we are still, the very least, making progress. <clears throat> this is such a stressful game of beat the clock. And the shorter that fuse grows... The shorter that fuse gets, the more my eyes are glued to it. My eyes are pretty much barely focused on the character, on the lodger, even the rooms, really, which is probably really boneheaded. But my eyes are pretty much just bouncing back and forth between that little white streak and the clock in the top left. Man. I have to find something soon. Just one more clock. It's barely a glimmer right now. Oh, come on. Don't go out on me now. It's so close. No, 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 no. I lost time. No. Oh, fuck. Oh, my God. I'm screwed. Oh, what... Incredible horseshit. Oh, damn it. Oh, damn it. This is the most frustrated I've been with a game in a long time. But I'll still hang by my opinion that this game is great. Damn it. Oh, man. Come so close. Yeah, but it doesn't look like it's going to be this playthrough. Unless some sort of miraculous stroke of luck occurs. Can't discount that yet. I'll finish this house out and we'll see. My candle burns at both ends. It will not last the night. But oh my friends and oh my foes. It gives a lovely light. Yeah. I'll just try to finish this one out. And if need be... Do another playthrough, cut ahead to wherever I dead end this time. Not a lot of optimism in that sentence. <laughs> I laughed through the pain. <laughs> Fuck. Damn it. Still not happy that sometimes I it, it, it just appears that I'm screwed and not in situations that are of my own design. Like, when I get myself cornered and I get myself trapped with nowhere to go. Those are the times where it's like, ah, oh, man, I screwed up, and it's not so frustrating. It's not so bad when it's your mistake, but in that situation, I, I don't even know what that was all about. It just felt like the game decided to screw me, and I can't really figure it out. Like, mechanically, I don't know what I did wrong. 
That's a terrible feeling in a game like this. <laughs> Ideally, you would like to be able to pinpoint what your mistake was instantly. As soon as you make it, you want to feel like, Oh, that's where I've messed up. And not what I felt just now, which is, oh, they screwed me. I guess that just comes with learning it more in depth. And this level is going incredibly quickly, because I found three clocks, which I could have used last time I did this. I'm not going to open that door up. So I have a feeling the little boy or girl huddled in the corner is going to screw me, and if I have any ghost of a chance... No, not round. If I have any ghost of a chance left of finishing this... Did, did something come through the door? Is that what happened? I was gonna say, if I had any ghost of a chance before... Yeah, I was gonna say, if I have any ghost of a chance of finishing this, I can't really afford to lose more time. Even though it seems like a bit of a foregone conclusion right now that it kind of ends here. Any chance I had went screeching out the window, and again, I don't understand what exactly happened. I don't understand what attacked me or how I lost that huge chunk of time. I feel like there's something wicked on the other side of the door. It's calling to me. Those are the doors that I do not want to go through. Because they will send me back to the beginning of that fucking house. And I think I've got myself... No, I'm not in a jam yet. I'm just gonna hang out here by the ladder for now. Maybe I'll head up here. Still don't want to... Oh, no. No, no, no. Okay, yeah. Still don't know what's up with that. Maybe it's because I was hanging out in the room with the light on when the lightning struck? I don't know. I feel like I've mostly gotten a good understanding for the game, but there are still just those couple elements that... Because I don't understand them, I seem to be getting put in situations where I cannot possibly win. Where I'm barred from success. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut ahead real quick, just... Again, because it's a little repetitious. See you in a sec. Alright. Moment of truth. Did I get it this time? This game is especially dangerous because the guests start it. Sooner or later, you'll hear a voice saying, Who isn't ready yet? After some time, he then says, You're ready. Because you're frozen. Blame yourself, for here I come. After that, they find you no matter what you're doing, and everything begins again. I wonder if that's been the source of my problems. This game feels impossible to win. It sure does. The key is, this is a game for the brave. In reality, one hides by standing in place. What? As long as even one person in the house is still hiding, the game will continue. But the game has to be finished. Whoever sees it to the end is the winner. So it looks like that diary page, or whatever that was, that little note, was just explaining the things that were frustrating me. I have a much better understanding now, I think. I have to kind of put them into practice, but still. Okay, again, I'll cut ahead to where I dead-ended. Can't believe this has taken more than two playthroughs. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, once more, I am back where I left off. I've been doing better and better. Doesn't look like it, but that should be plenty of time. It's just, I, ha I have to understand exactly what's been going wrong how the mechanics work, and how I deal with the issues I've been having. Because up until now, I've kind of been letting frustration get the better of me. And that is proving to be a critical, critical error. So, armed with a newfound understanding for the mechanics, 
I should be fine. I should be just fine. That is a non-trivial amount of time I have left. This is gonna be it. Gonna do it. Gonna do it. I was knocking the game's difficulty early on, but man, has it turned around and, and cranked that difficulty dial up. And it's, it like a lot of Ice Pick Lodge games, forces you to really digest the mechanics before it lets you move forward and make progress. You, it's, it's a very difficult game to brute force in the later stages. And it's thanks mostly to the introduction about halfway through the game of the ticking clock element, which very, very, very stressful. And between that and the mystery, the way everything is set up, and putting you in, in these kinds of situations and the confusion, it doesn't... It's At some point in the game, it stopped inspiring dread and fear so much, but it started really inspiring a lot of... It started really eliciting a lot of anxiety, and that is impressive for a game to do. And I was thinking more about some of the story elements while I was uh, taking about an hour to go through everything again off camera. And I was wondering about the way that the, the, the program was interning people and what that might be a metaphor for. I, I went through some of my thoughts on that when I was reading the diary pages at the end of the last episode. Something occurred to me though that Icepick Lodge is an Eastern European developer. I believe they're, I want to say they're Russian, but I, I don't want to commit to that. Ah, that was a mistake. I turned and faced the strange. Um, but I was thinking, like, what if this is all a metaphor for not... the Holocaust, like I was thinking, but maybe the Soviet gulags. And I wonder if the white tally marks that you see in some of the rooms, the rooms with, um... the rooms with the white handprints and footprints and stuff, I wonder if those tally marks were counting the number of days that they were imprisoned. Yeah, I was coming up with all sorts of theories off camera. There is usually a room with a stool and a noose that I noticed very early on in the LP. Maybe the lodger tried to hang himself with the noose because his kids were taken away, and he sequestered himself in the woods to grieve. Wait there. Okay, that level went very quickly, mostly cleanly, except for one fairly big mistake, but I'm not going to beat myself over up over that too much. The morning came. In this game, you need to move time forward, and the sooner the game ends, the better. Is that giving me a hint about one of the endings? Like, you need more time to get a better ending? Time left on the clock, that is? Or if it just means you'll get to the end and not just game over and supposedly lose your mind. Alright, the guest is still far enough away for me to be comfortable. This should be the last... the last four sh section, actually. Oh, wow, that's a really nice surprise, I think. I think the game could have a lot more in store for me, but it looks like we just need to wind it forward one more hour. Yes! What is this all about? This is a brand new element to the forest section. Man, Ice Pick Lodge really loves their runic symbols between the void and now Knock Knock. What is this all about? Is this the end? Is there is there more to the game than this? Oh man. What's the point of all the runes? Like, do the runes do anything? Am I searching for the house again? Oh, I'm really confused. 
just when I thought I had a pretty clear understanding of everything. That appears to be a hamburger and a cog. I'm just gonna call out what I see in the symbols now, like some sort of Rorschach test. <laughs> Maybe the game is psychologically analyzing me like shattered memories. That is... Okay, on my left is clearly the logo for the onion, and on the right is a dopey-looking face that looks a little bit like Mr. Popo. I can't unsee that face. Pareidolia, it's too strong. That one looks like an unlocked padlock. What is all this? What's this all about? Man, just when I thought there wasn't anything left, to analyze. Like, I thought I had the whole picture, and the ending was just gonna maybe tie it all together. Why? I should have known better. The runes are running out, though. Yeah, the runes ran out. I wonder what that means. And I haven't even... I don't think I've even come close to stumbling across the house again, so... Okay, so if the four sections are when I'm awake... Credits? What? Is this the way it ends? Or... Wait a minute. Wait, what? It... So he closes his eyes and supposedly falls asleep in the forest, but that the little cutscene right before this showed him boarding up his house, so... Huh. Oh, there was, there was a lot to think over here. So the credits roll as he closes his eyes to fall asleep, I guess? I guess this means that he went insane. Yeah, because I I think this is the bad ending. I don't know what the other ending is, but like I was saying before, from the comments, it looks like to get the good ending, you need to find enough fragments of reality or find the girl enough times in the forest. I wonder if I can still find her and influence my ending from here. Yeah, if I keep exploring, because why would they give me the option to keep exploring the forest unless it's just... A deal where the lodger loses his mind and either wanders the forest forever. I don't, I'm not sure. This is a little bit... This is new and difficult to wrap my mind around. Yeah, I thought it might be an ending-defining choice to keep exploring the forest, but no. I'm just gonna let the, let the credits roll, then. Hmm. That's... Okay, well, while the credits roll, I guess I will wrap my thoughts up and continue with the, the theorizing about the story. So something else I was thinking about, is the Lodger even the writer of the diary? Is he the author? Is the Lodger... No, the Lodger references it being his diary, though, so I guess that's not right. But then again, the game is a big, unreliable narrator anyway, so I don't know. This is why this being a short game is a good thing, because I'll definitely play through this over and over to get those details sorted out. One thing I haven't even considered, though, is how this this meta-narrative and the other games that are presented in diary form fit in. Like in this meta-story where Ice Pick Lodge was sent instructions and archives. Oh, whoa, 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 maybe the Lodger? <laughs> maybe in this overarching story about how they were sent all this stuff, maybe the Lodger sent it to them? <laughs> if only. The neat thing about th that meta-narrative, though, is it's obviously not true, but it's like a really good ghost story told around a campfire or something. Like, everyone rationally knows it's bullshit, but it's grounded enough that if the scene is set right, then real life almost lends credibility to the story. Like, the fact that it's not plausible, but it is, I guess, technically possible, in the loosest sense of the word, lets, lets the story get in your head. And grounding it in reality like that gives it a little extra punch, like that cliche of a story about a killer or something, again, told around a campfire where the story starts something like, on a dark and stormy night, just like tonight, that little bit of reality and scene setting lends a little credibility to it. Not sure where else I'm going with that thought. What a peaceful way to end this game. No background music, no nothing. Just still and silent in the forest with crickets chirping in the background. I wonder... Hmm. I wonder if the lodger's 
study of nature, his fascination. I wonder if that's just because of the girl from the diary. Maybe he's just lonely and depressing, he makes the guests up. I don't really have any other thoughts on the story as of right now. So, let's see, to sum my, th my thoughts up on the gameplay, man, what a, a stressful, intense game, and yet pretty rewarding. Repetitive, but I'm going to keep going back through it despite that. I said before that I wouldn't apologize for the dead end game design that I uh, that Ice Pick Lodge has kept alive, but if there is any justification to it, it's upping the tension in this case. Plus, it's a little bit more acceptable here because it's a short game, so that's it's not quite as unforgivable. There, oh man, my head is racing right now. Kind of eager to start the other playthrough up, the next playthrough up, and I'll gun for the the other ending in that one. Not for the LP, though. Ice Pick Lodge games have a real good way of getting into your head in, in unique ways, and they feature some of the best, most original, most chilling writing and storytelling of any, of any video game. Even when they aren't straight-up scary, they're still tremendously good about getting in your head and forcing you to sift through your own mental baggage. Above all, though, and this more this speaks more to my love for Ice Pick Lodge as a developer more th so than just this game as its own self-contained little package. Ice Pick Lodge is such an incredibly innovative little studio, and they produce things that are so good to boot. You know, because innovation can be can be fresh, but innovation innovative games aren't always good, unless it's Ice Pick Lodge. It seems very few games. Franchises, studios, whatever, have ever blended gameplay with storytelling as well as they do. Very, very few of them, I think. Particularly, not just Knock Knock, but The Void even more so. They might even outshine old Silent Hill in that regard. It's hard to argue with nostalgia, though, so I'm not sure. Also, I really like this, this survival horror renaissance. Survival horror and, and these really fresh, fun indie games were making a comeback before Kickstarter blew up. But with Kickstarter, it kind of accelerated this pl this proliferation of great new ideas. And particularly horror games that might never have stood a chance. And I am so grateful that this option is out there now. And it's become so successful that the indie renaissance and the horror renaissance is as big as it is right now. We've games like Paranormal, Sunless Sea, Never Ending Nightmares, The Long Dark, Knock Knock, and so many more that are either on the horizon or have already come out. It's so awesome. It's so, so awesome that games like this can, can reliably be funded now and not have to be beholden to major publishers homogenizing the, the games. I guess to get back on track with, with Ice Pick Lodge and Knock Knock, though, overall, my thoughts on the game... I uh, obviously I'm kind of in, in love with it as I am with with most of Ice Pick Lodge's games. I had a few moments of of real genuine frustration that kind of soured it for me a little bit, but still all in all I really like it. I like it a lot. I like Knock Knock. It's one of the better games that's come out this year in spite of uh the bad taste it left in my mouth on a few occasions. And even then once I got a better understanding for everything that was going on, that frustration mellowed out a little bit. So even then, even my criticism there is addressed in the game. The other problem, the other real big problem, is the repetition hurts it because it's a type of trial and error, hit a dead end brick wall kind of game that asks you to then play through the entire game again. And that makes it a little bit tedious when you have like 90% of the puzzle figured out and it's just that remaining 10% that's keeping you having to to go through that repetition that's a little tedious other than that though it's it's fine it it's remarkably solid i cannot believe these credits by the way these are like assassin's creed 3 credits they might be longer these credits are outrageous all these people could not have possibly worked on this right it's my policy to never ever skip credits. I want to give proper credit where credit's due to everyone who worked on the game that I, I just got done doing a playthrough of, but holy shit. And I kind of feel bad for feeling that way. Man, that's... It 
it seems like that's too many people, though. Unless the credits are looping and I haven't been paying attention while I've been yammering on. Okay, well, since I have kind of given all of my thoughts on the game that I have to give, I am going to start wrapping this up. Hopefully by the time I am done with my usual outro, credits will have wrapped up. If they have not, then I will just go silent until the credits are finished rolling. So, while these extraordinarily long credits roll, I would love it if you guys could take a few seconds to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, that way you'll know exactly when new videos are up in your inbox on YouTube, that way, and I release at least one video every day, so there's a steady flow of content on the channel. Feel free to drop me a comment, I'm very active in the comments, and I like talking to my fans and everyone else who wants to ask a question or share their thoughts on the game I'm playing, or just say something random. If you click my name right below the video, it brings you to my channel and you can check out all of my playlists and other videos. There are a few hundred of those now, so you're sure to find something you like, whether it be more of this type of solo LP, which is more subdued and informative, stuff like Silent Hill, Bayonetta, Demon Souls, Dark Souls, Mega Man X, uh, stuff like that. Or there's the other side, the, the hide to my jekyll, the louder, more energetic, off-the-wall comedic style stuff that I do with my friend Mike. Those playthroughs are all labeled as featuring Mike, and those are series like Banjo-Kazooie, Osiris Wrath, Ellie Noir, Brutal Legend, which is going on right now. The next few solo LPs will be Maniac Mansion, Super Earth Defense Force, and Mega Man X4. Gonna be short, little, bite-sized playthroughs all in a row. And then the next long one after those three are finished, I don't really know what's coming after that, but stay tuned to the channel, and you will find out. Also, I'm doing other non-LP video series. I'm going to start doing more streaming on Twitch at twitch.tv slash scribed. There was the Extra Life 25-hour marathon that happened earlier this month, which was a lot of fun. We raised $250 for Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. And in fact, I'm doing another stream, not a marathon charity stream, this Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern. Mike's going to be there for at least a little while, and we're going to be playing the new Adventure Time game on the Wii U called uh, Adventure Time Explore This Dungeon, because I don't know why. And then after Mike leaves for a bit, I'll probably keep streaming for a little bit. Who knows? Might switch games. You'll just have to tune in and find out. So if you want to join in on the fun, again, that's twitch.tv slash scribed. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, these credits, they show no signs of slowing. There's no earthly way of knowing. So I'm just going to close this out. Let the credits keep on rolling until the end of the video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one.